good uh, well, it's afternoon here everybody uh, welcome back to my channel I'm Patty at ultraslowrunner.com right now I'm in Shampooey Park my husband wanted to take some photos out here he's going to be the photographer at my race on Saturday out here uh, it's the Shampooey 30k um, and mostly you're on this kind of bike path in this beautiful uh, wooded area. Uh, this is actually where I ran my first 50 miler. So uh, this area just has a lot of meaning to me and that race went really well. <laughs> so uh, it's a great flat course if you're looking for a first 50 miler that, uh, you know, there's it's a loop multiple loop course and there's a little bit of trail about a mile of trail per loop so if you're kind of just getting into ultras they have a 50k as well uh, this might be a good course for that so just kind of think about that it's in usually at the end of october so um, and this is near uh, newburgh oregon outside of Salem area so uh, just uh, just a thought if you're looking for something like that uh, for today's video I'm gonna hopefully make it kind of short but I was just gonna talk a little bit about my experience with uh, a kind of a short intro of my experience with eating disorders and how that relates to my running now, I could make probably a million videos about this topic. Uh, so today I'm going to keep it kind of short. But if you're, uh, if you're interested in eating disorders and its relationship to not just running, but physical activity and things like that, just drop a, drop a note in the comments about that. And I'll be sure to cover more about that. But, uh, but I should clarify, I'm not an expert in eating disorders, although most of my professional experience has mostly been with binge eating disorder. I've worked with a lot of clients who struggle with that. So uh, professionally, I have experience and knowledge and some background, but uh, just want to make sure uh, any any advice or anything like that that I offer. It's coming mostly from my personal experience and not professional experience. So just want to make that clear. But uh, so running and my experience with eating disorders really started, uh, and I'm not going to go through the whole history, but I'll start with the process of healing from it. Uh, it's kind of an interesting story. I was in my I was in my early 20s and I was in my therapist's office and I was at the point where I really should have been in the hospital for anorexia I was struggling with a lot of the uh, physical side effects or physical problems associated with anorexia and she thought I really needed to be in the hospital and what I told her <laughs> Know, my weird personality what I told her was I really needed something to challenge myself and kind of step outside of that eating disorder brain I mean anyone who's experienced an eating disorder will know what I'm talking about uh, that you have kind of this um, this brain uh, so I felt like I needed something to kind of dogs uh, <laughs> to kind of get outside of that and so and up until this point I was not a runner I mean I ran track and track in junior high and played soccer but other than that up until this point I probably hadn't run more than two miles two miles or something like that and so what I decided to do for this challenge was actually to do this bike ride uh, and I also was not a cyclist at the time which 
<laughs> it's so crazy to think about, but um, I decided to bike from my hometown to Astoria, Oregon. I had always been curious about that town. And uh, for some reason I picked that as a destination. And <laughs> so I borrowed a bike and it was not a road bike. Not really a mountain bike, but somewhere in between. Not really a bike you'd take a long bike ride on. So, uh, and then I borrowed a tent to, I was gonna camp along the way in these hiker, biker campgrounds. Now, also up to this point, I had never really done much camping. Uh, certainly had never camped on my own. <laughs> so, this whole thing was just crazy from the start, but oh, some runners. <laughs> Hi. So anyway, I had uh, not done much cycling or camping or anything like that, but I, for some reason, I had this in my head that this was, was going to be a healing process or part of the healing process. So. To shorten the story up, I got to Astoria. I stayed in this bed and breakfast. And now up until this point, you know, I was probably, I won't go into the specific calories because that can be triggering for people, but uh, I was not eating much. And, but I get to this bed and breakfast and it's the first morning I'm there. And, you know, they serve yummy food at bed and breakfast. So here I am. Uh, first, I'm eating with other people, which was terrifying. And I was eating like waffles and sausage and scones and whatever else. And I don't know what was going on, but I was eating it freely, not worrying about the calories or anything like that. So bizarre. But, uh, so I, I walked around the town that day and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, on my way back, I was cycling back and I stopped in this other campground and I met these women that were cycling from Canada to, uh, Mexico. They were doing, this was all on Highway 101 on the coast of Oregon. And I met these women and they invited me to their campground and we had tea and cookies and we were talking and for some reason I told them I was a long distance runner. Not sure where that came from. And at the time I was not a long distance runner. But anyway, we talked about that for a while and eventually I got home and that's when I started running and the relationship with my eating disorder at that point was running really uh, <laughs> gets me emotional. Um, running really was part, it was the beginning of my healing running, as you know, if you're a runner or not just running, but anything you find that you're passionate about, uh, could be Zumba or knitting or photography or you know, whatever it is. Uh, I think you find that when you, when you discover something that you're passionate about, all of the struggles you've faced in your life, you know, that passion tends to become part of your healing process and it can be very very powerful and running was exactly that for me it had become a way to get out of my eating disorder brain and to focus on something that was rewarding and you know starving yourself is in no way rewarding I do understand a lot of the dynamics of not really benefits, but, uh, you know, some people feel very safe with 
uh, anorexia or any eating disorder, binge eating disorder, there's a sense of safety in that because you feel like for once in your life you have some control over your body that's especially important for somebody who's experienced childhood trauma, um, especially sexual abuse. I understand that. I I definitely do. I do not want to, you know, trivialize that aspect of it at all. But in the end, you know, eating disorders just don't give you anything back. There's no reward. Even when you get to a weight that you want to be at or, I don't know, stay under your calories for the day, it's just not rewarding. And it certainly wasn't rewarding for me. So really my journey with running started and less and less. Now it took years and years for me to be able to say I was completely free of an eating disorder. I struggled with bulimia for a long time, but you know, running was always there. And um, there was this transition at some point to where running became more important than my eating disorder. It became way more important than my weight or calories or anything like that. Now, it didn't happen overnight, but over time. And I do want to caution you, though, uh, and I think this is very important, is when you're struggling with an eating disorder and beginning the healing process, you do have to be very cautious about, um, especially if it's some sort of activity running or anything like that, you do have to be very cautious that whatever you're doing is not feeding your disorder. You may be eating at that point, but your activity becomes a sort of an eating disorder in itself. You're just burning off your food and it becomes sort of another form of purging what you're eating. So you really want to look at that and be very cautious about whatever you're doing, what does it get back what does it give back to you? Is it rewarding? Does it enrich your life in any way? And if it doesn't, it might not be the activity for you. So as an example, in my experience, I did uh, I did some bodybuilding, competitive bodybuilding for a little while. And bodybuilding for me was really feeding my disorder. I'm going to around here and walk back. Uh, it was feeding my disorder. I mean, it was like, you know, imagine one of those chiclet machines where you put a quarter in and you get a handful of chiclets. It was like spitting chiclets out and feeding me this eating disorder brain, like free chiclets just flying into my mouth. <laughs> that might be a little weird, but anyway, I'm, I'm sort of a creative writer brain. I think of weird things. Anyway, so uh, eventually, and bodybuilding wasn't fun for me. I d really didn't enjoy any aspect of it. And so eventually I got back into running. It was a short stint with bodybuilding. I got back into running and, and just never have looked back. Uh, I remember, you know, uh, I'm going to cry again. <laughs> uh, I remember, well, everybody remembers their first ultra, but I remember crossing that finish line of my first marathon and, ah, uh, uh, amazing. <laughs> so I guess, you know, I have a, I have a million tips on starting the process of healing from an eating disorder, anything you may be struggling with. But for this video, for the purpose of this video, I just want to say that if you're struggling with an eating disorder and wanting to heal from that and just escape that trap that it really is, look for something that is rewarding in your life. And make that more important than your eating disorder. You have to find something that gives something back to you. Something that you enjoy and gives you happiness and joy. And is 
rewarding. I promise you, it's going to change your life. More dogs. <laughs> hey, puppy. Hi, sweetie. Out for a walk today. <laughs> Okay, I love dogs. Uh, I have my dog uh, back at the car right now with my husband. <laughs> but anyway, like I was saying, you know, running has given me so much, so much, more than I could have ever imagined. And so find something, explore activities, explore hobbies, uh, I don't know, volunteer with something, find something that sort of ignites that passion in yourself, something that gets you out of that eating disordered brain, that obsession, and find something. And be patient with yourself. It's not going to happen overnight. Like I said, for me, it was years and years but all along that journey, I had these moments during races or runs or whatever. I had these moments of, uh, <laughs> I promise I don't cry when I'm working with clients, but uh, <laughs> sometimes I want to. But it was just these moments of pure joy something I can't really describe completely. I know my other runner friends feel the same way or actually I have some friends that do all sorts of activities and we get to sit around and talk about our passions and no matter what it is there's so many similarities so anyway uh, I'm going to um, leave you with all of that again if you want to know more about that journey of how I overcame my eating disorders, you know, put something in the comments about that. I'd be happy to make more videos. I mean, essentially this is a running channel, but you know, it's almost impossible to exclude personal stories of running. So whatever that means. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, everybody, I hope your running is going well for 2019 so far. Uh, I hope you've got a list of races you're looking forward to. And uh, again, find your joy. Find something that you love that takes you out of that, that head space, that brain, that negative brain that doesn't give you anything back. So, all right, well, I'm gonna go find my puppy and uh, enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. I actually have an eight miler today and a 22 miler tomorrow, so I gotta get going. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.